everyone. I hope you are doing great. As you know, writing task two can be difficult and challenging at times. So in today's video, we are going to work on seven great steps with the help of which you can write an effective essay. So without further ado, let's start. So take a look at this question. Some people think that wild animals should not be kept in zoos. Others believe that there are good reasons for having zoos. Discuss both these views and give your opinion. The first thing that you should do is reading question very carefully in order to understand what exactly has been asked. Therefore, the first step that can be named here is answer all parts of the question. In the question that we've just read, you're supposed to answer three parts two sides of the discussion plus your own opinion. So if you are determined to get a very good score in the task achievement part, you have to consider covering all these three parts. So take a look at the essay that I've chosen uh, to be displayed here. Of course, it is not the best uh, essay and it's got a lot of problems, but we are just working on that as a kind of example. Look at this essay. You'll see how, uh, you know, uh, there are different parts, different paragraphs, and you see that from the beginning of the essay, the second uh, paragraph is related to one side of the discussion, the third paragraph is related to the other side of the discussion, and the next paragraph is related to the author's opinion. So the author has made a great effort to address all the three parts of the questions. It is very important to notice that uh, what kind of activities that you are supposed to do based on the question. Here, three parts have to be mentioned, but sometimes you've got two parts, sometimes you've got double questions. Based on the type of question, the approach and uh, the kind of answer that you go for would be different. So try to understand different parts of the questions and address all of them accordingly. The next step that we should take is about our clear position, especially if you are willing to get a 7 or a, a higher band score in IELTS writing. You have to consider doing that because it is very clearly stated in the band descriptor that for getting that kind of, you know, score, the author has to mention a clear position throughout the whole essay. So take a look at the essay that we've just read. Here we see that uh, the author has explicitly talked about the position and the opinion. For example, in the introduction part, we've got, I believe that, and the opinion has been stated. Of course, in one of the body paragraphs, we've got, I strongly believe that. And finally, we have it confirmed or reaffirmed in the conclusion part as well as far as in consent. So we can understand that uh, just, you know, the author was conscious of the importance of the position which has to be uh, made clearly. So remember to state your position in the introduction part, in your body paragraphs, and of course in your conclusion. Definitely, it has to be restated in your conclusion part as well, because I see a lot of candidates just refer to their opinion in the introduction part, but they do not do that in their concluding part. But remember, it is very important to be seen in all parts of your essay, especially introduction and conclusion. The next step that has to be taken is about structuring your essay. So essays need paragraphs to show the reader where to start, which ideas are important, and that your essay is concluding. You know, the steps based on which the, uh, you know, uh, reader has to read your essay is very important. And paragraphing is essential in English language. It makes it easy for the examiner and, of course, the reader by having a space between each paragraph. Take a look at the essay that we have in here. 
you know, everything is clear. The first paragraph, the second paragraph, the third paragraph, the fourth paragraph, and the fifth one. You know, uh, even, even though we haven't read uh, the essay, you can clearly see that kind of logical, you know, structure. It is very clear that the author knew that the structure and paragraphing is very important in uh, English language and, of course, IELTS writing. So, imagine that the content is exactly the same, but the author just uh, made a kind of, you know, single paragraph. What would happen to that kind of writing? You know, it will be affected negatively in this part because paragraphing is everything. It is very important. The next step is about using linking devices. Linking devices are very, very important. We, we need those kind of devices, those kind of tools in order to link our ideas together. There are different kinds of devices, there are different kinds of phrases that make your whole answer logical and clear. So take a look at the one that we have in here. The first paragraph, something like at present, something like them, in fact, and most importantly, they, unless they, uh, these animals, and, for example, they, and, therefore. Take a look at the ones that I just uh, made clear for you. These are not something very difficult or something, you know, extraordinary. Something very clear, like they, like because. You're just uh, trying to uh, make your sentences and your ideas somehow linked together. You'll see how the linking devices help the essay sound logical to the reader. It is the glue needed to stick it all together. Remember that referencing is very important. For example, you just say something and then you say they, you wouldn't just repeat uh, the, uh, just the word itself. You would refer to that. Or you've got a kind of central idea and then you say this has caused many problems. Something like that. You just try to use referencing. Just remember that sometimes candidates make a mistake and they try to just overuse these kind of linking devices. Every sentence should not start with a linking word or linking device because if you just pay attention to that, even in your mother language, you wouldn't use linking devices in every sentence. Okay, of course, not using linking devices would damage your writing. Overusing them will make your uh, essay somehow sound artificial, which affect your uh, writing and score negatively as well. So try to make a balance for the use of linking devices and remember to use referencing as well. The next step that we should pay attention to is about the range of vocabulary. You've got this kind of chance to seize. You know, you just have this kind of possibility to show off the lexical range that you know because the examiner or the reader is willing to see a wide variety of vocabulary which are topical. So remember to use a wide variety of vocabulary in order to show the examiner that I am in a good place. I know everything that is related to this topic. That's why I'm using these many words related to the topic. So instead of repeating the words, try to just show that kind of variety that the examiner is somehow interested in uh, having. So use words and phrases that naturally go together. We call them collocations. Take a look at the one that we have in here. So you can see alternative ways, rare species, endangered, underestimate, educational importance. You know, these kind of words that uh, just go together uh, are called collocations. They are very important because they will make your essay uh, much more advanced and you can show that uh, you know, you're in a good place, you know everything, and you can use different kinds of, you know, words that are uh, together. 
Use phrases that show you understand how to use phrasal verbs and idiomatic language. Take a look at the band descriptor and you will understand that for getting a high band score in IELTS writing, one of the most important parameters that we have to be careful of is the use of idiomatic language. So for getting a 7 in this part, you need to use uh, different kinds of, you know, idiomatic language, um, words or phrases. So these are, for example, like make money, like get a chance to see, not be kept in cages, care for, be looked after, earn money or set free. So as you see, we are not looking for something extraordinary or bizarre. Uh, instead, we are looking for different kinds of words or phrases which are less common. It does not mean to use uh, you know, complex words or archaic word at all. Look at this essay and you can see different kinds of uh, words uh, with the use of that. The next thing that we should be careful of is about the spelling errors and mistakes. You need to think about a lot of things. You're in hurry. You're somehow worried about the time and many other factors, okay? At the end of the day, you've got that kind of stress and pressure. So while writing, you make a lot of mistakes uh, that actually you can uh, correct before uh, delivering your paper or finishing it. So take a look at the mistakes that we have here. For example, here we have animals and governments, okay? So you, you can just, you know, change it. You know, it is a kind of typo. So animals and governments, okay? So of course we do not speak like that, but in order to make it clear here, I'm just saying that. So governments. And you can see that by checking it, you can simply understand the mistakes and correct them. But if you do not do that, and if you are running out of time and you just skip this stage, you will deliver your paper with these mistakes, and that will have a lot of consequences on your score. Depends on the number of mistakes and typos that you have on your paper. The next thing that we should be careful of is about grammar because, of course, we should be using a wide variety of grammatical points and we should use them accurately because there are different considerations here. Not only a kind of, you know, variety is needed for a high PAM score, but also the majority of your sentences should be error-free in order to uh, show that you deserve a 7 or a higher band score. Take a look at here. You can see that here, for example, the candidate has got problems with articles. We need the, you know, before Indian Tiger, we need the, and uh, for the other ones that are clear here as well. So when you read your work before having it delivered, you can understand the mistakes and correct them, hopefully. The next thing that you should be careful of is about the, the subject and verb agreement because it is one of the very common areas with which a lot of candidates have got problem. So take a look at here. The candidate says, they is not. So you can see that uh, they do not agree. They are not. The next type of uh, grammatical problem is about, uh, you know, um, preposition. For example, here. We have at their country. We do not say at their country, it is in their country, okay? And the next item, of course, is about singular and plural nouns. Sometimes you should be using some nouns which are uncountable as in a singular word, but there are other times that you need to make the word as a kind of plural one because it is countable. Here we go with stories instead of story. So. Uh, the advice that I can give you about this is making sure that you know the mistakes that you usually make and practice those structures uh, beforehand. So, for example, some people have got problem with, uh, you know, subject and verb agreement because they forget what the subject uh, was. So all the time you have to just get back in order to check what uh, the subject was and just uh, make sure whether the agreement is okay or it uh, needs to be checked. Uh, the other thing is about your mistakes. 
with a lot of practice, you can make it clear uh, whether you're good at something or no, you're not good at something. For example, like articles, like uh, you know, tenses. When you make it clear, you can practice on that a lot. And of course, for the test, you can make sure that the sentence is completely error-free with that regard. You become a little bit more conscious of that, okay? And that is a good sign because you will think twice. So, practice writing complex sentences and use punctuation. The other important piece of advice that I'm going to tell you is about this, that your writing should be a mixture of complex sentences, compound sentences, and simple sentences. If you are just using some simple sentences, you're not going to be given a score uh, higher than 6. So, remember to use complex sentences. And complex sentences do not mean really complex. So, you just need to use a wide variety of, for example, subordinating conjunctions. Just use something like although, however, why, whereas. And you've got your sentence as categorized as a complex one. So, and you're good to go. Or, for example, relative clauses, which, who, whom. These make your sentences to be complex. Check your essay. The last step that we are talking about is checking your essay. There are different, uh, let's say, phases. The first thing that you need to consider is about uh, the answering part. Have you answered all parts or not? Okay. If you remember, we were supposed to answer three different uh, parts in this question two sides of the discussion, and of course, your own opinion. So you have to make sure that everything is okay with that, and you've done those three elements carefully. The next thing, did I use paragraphs? As I told you previously, paragraphing is everything in IELTS and in English language. So if you do not use paragraphing, and if you do not uh, just respect this, you will face a lot of consequences. And the next thing, did I use linkers? So, linkers are the devices that try to help your sentences to uh, just stick together. They act like glue. The next thing is about your spelling. We make a lot of mistakes while writing uh, because we are in a hurry, because we are just, you know, uh, stressed and a lot of other factors. But the most important thing is about your revision. Try to manage your time in a way that you've got that kind of time in order to have your work revised at the end of the day. And the next item that you need to be careful of is about a range of vocabulary. So try to introduce a wide variety of vocabulary. Sometimes I read some very nice essays and I see that, for example, some very beautiful collocations keep being repeated. And it just shows that the person didn't know it is not a good sign to have that kind of word or phrase repeated because it shows a kind of limitation. Every kind of repetition shows a limitation because it just shows or uh, gives that kind of signal to the examiner that the person didn't know a lot of words or phrases. So try to avoid any kind of repetition, whether it is about vocabulary or structures. Did I use complex sentence structures? It is very important if you are um, you know, intended to go for a 7 or a higher band score, you need to focus on this part. You need to introduce and use a wide variety of complex sentences because it is a must. And the next item, did I use punctuation? Punctuation is a very important debate in English language as well. I know that in a lot of languages, punctuation uh, has a very different story. For example, they use comma in a different way or the other you know, elements uh, would vary. So make sure that you know the basics of the punctuation in English language because as far as you are working on your writing, everything is documented and it is one of the parameters that has to be taken into consideration for your final score. And uh, the last item that we need to work on is about checking your work. 
as I told you, you can really work on this part even in your practices. Try to allocate a five minutes revision time because that will make a lot for you. You know, you will make a lot out of it. Uh, just try to sit down and try to act out like an examiner. Just read your work and try to hunt down the problems, whether they are related to structure, to grammar, to vocabulary, or maybe you just see whether you've uh, answered the question very carefully, whether you have developed the central ideas that you've introduced, or you're just listing the ideas, whether you have covered all the parts, or no, you have just partially answer the questions. So before having your paper delivered and uh, letting another person do the job, do the scoring for you, you are the best examiner for yourself. And a lot of time you see, wow, you've got these many mistakes that you yourself could have uh, actually edited before another person does it for you. And of course, if they do that firstly, your score will be affected negatively. But if you're smart enough to do it yourself from the beginning, you will help your score to at least one band score or maybe have a band score, depends on the number of mistakes that you can hunt before another person. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and uh, I will definitely come up with different kinds of ideas for helping you with this IELTS uh, writing test and uh, I hope that uh, you like this video and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. It will motivate me to think about other ideas and come up with other videos later on. Love you guys. Bye-bye.